Hey, what's up everybody, James Brandon here. Before we get started, I got a new video light. So what do you think? Not bad, right? So today we're gonna go over a technique where you can take uh, an image like this and turn it into something like this. What you're basically doing is we're simulating a technique called long exposure photography, where you take like a 30 second or a minute or four minutes or however long, and it drags those clouds across the sky or, or if you do it with water, it'll turn the water like silky smooth. And that's what we're going after. So we're gonna use On One Photo Raw 2018 for this today, instead of Lightroom or Photoshop. First of all, you can't do it in Lightroom. Um, second of all, Photoshop is great and I use it a lot, but there's programs out there that do a much better job with masking and effects and stuff like that. And On One is the program that I always reach for when I need good masking um, and some, some different effects in terms of like blur and layers and stuff like that. So let's go. Got a new intro too. All right, so here we are inside of On One Photo Raw 2018. Now, a lot of you may not be super familiar with this program, but it's very similar to Lightroom and Photoshop, but it's all combined into one program. So you don't have to hop back and forth between the two. So that's why we're gonna do everything inside of On One Photo Raw today and show just what it's capable of, especially in the area of masking and um, different effects that you can do on photos and stuff like that. So. Basically, if you're familiar with Photoshop, you'll recognize the layout. We've got all of our tools on the left-hand side here, and then we've got layers over here on the right-hand side. But if we wanted to go over to Browse, we have that tab up here. We have Develop. Both of those are pretty much what you would find in Lightroom where you can organize photos and then do raw processing on them, uh, which is non-destructive. And then you have Effects and Layers and Resize down here. Um, at the bottom, and those are more of what you could do in Photoshop um, to some extent. Now, there's a little bit of overlap and things like that, things that are missing, things that this does better than Photoshop and things that Photoshop does better than this. So yeah, there's not one perfect, you know, 100% solution out there right now. But um, that's why I use this because there's certain things that Photoshop just doesn't do that great. Um, and masking is one of those things. Now there's ways to mask accurately in Photoshop, but it's kind of clunky takes a lot longer, and I'll show you why here in a second, uh, why I use On One. So let's just get right into it. What we have here is we have the first layer, um, and then we're gonna immediately just duplicate this layer. So we're gonna hit Command or Control J, and that's gonna do the same thing as it would in Photoshop, just give us a new stamped layer. And from here, we're gonna create our initial mask. So to do that, I'll go over here to Quick Mask, right here, you can also hit the W quick key. And this is where it gets really unique and something that only on one is capable of. And that's this quick mask feature. So we have this red brush. If I hit X, it would hop over to green, but red is gonna be what we want to get rid of in the image. So what we wanna get rid of here is the sky. So all I'll do is just draw a line and what I'm, trying to do is just sample different parts of the sky to make sure that it has a good um, bit of information to sample from for the algorithm. And then as soon as I let go, On One's gonna go to work and it's gonna start removing that sky from the image. And it's probably gonna do a pretty good job. That's my guess. Okay, so here we go. So if we go over here, we can right click this image and then mask view mode. Um, let's see, we'll do grayscale. And there we go. So that's our initial mask. And that did a really, really, really good job. Like this is incredible. And now all we need to do is just refine this and get it to a little bit better state. If we wanna turn that off, we can also just hit Control M like that. Okay, and I think that would be the same on, the, on a PC, um, Control M. I think that's gonna be the same on Mac and PC. Let me know if I'm wrong. Okay, the next thing we need to do is to refine this mask. So for that, we'll switch over to the regular brush I already have over here. You can also just hit B. And we can resize it just like in Photoshop with the bracket keys. And then we're gonna use the perfect brush, which is this option up here with the little stars above the brush. So that's probably gonna be off by default, but you just turn that on. And here's where it gets really cool. So anywhere where you can see that plus mark on the brush, 
that's going to be like, that's gonna be where you wanna sample from. And the perfect brush is gonna go in and keep refining that brush or that, that mask for us. So I'll show you what I mean here. So we'll pull up this mask again, and then I'm going to switch over to uh, paint out. And then we'll just start painting around this tree. So you can see that where that minus sign is, is it's gonna be using that and it's looking at the sky basically. And it's saying, okay, since the minus sign is over the sky, we're gonna use that to start refining this mask. And as long as I don't dip into the tree right here, you can see if I dip into the tree, it gets worse. So we just have to make care or be sure that we don't bleed into the tree there with the mask. And then we can just go along and refine this and make it better and better and better. Okay, now if we, want to, if we want to paint over into the tree, we can just hold down the command key and then draw all the way through it. And it's basically going to lock that algorithm in place so that we can paint over the tree without bleeding into it. So that's another cool feature. All right, we'll do the same thing over on this tree. You can see that it's just getting better and better the more I refine it. So we'll come down here, okay? And you wanna be careful, like right there, it's gonna bleed into the mountains. We don't necessarily want that. We'll just come along the top here. You just wanna make sure that this is as good as it can be. So I'll hold down the option key again and just go across this tree. You can see right there that there's a little bit of a part of the image that it didn't pick up on. So we can just kind of click around inside the tree where we see that it's not doing a great job, like right there, All right? All right, and I think that's looking pretty good. All right, let's hit Control M again to go back. And we can just turn this off also to see what's what it's looking like, okay? So I just turned the bottom layer off there. So we can see that the mountains kind of got bled into a little bit too much there. So I'll hit X to go to paint in, and I'll just come along here, okay? And it's giving us a little bit of trouble right there. So we can kind of just go back and forth. We'll try this and then hold down the command key. That's not doing it, okay? If we need to, I can see what's happening here. There's some clouds coming over the mountain that are pretty much the exact same color as the snow on the mountain. And that's where it's having some trouble, which is understandable. So we'll just turn off the smart brush and then go to paint back in. We'll uh, hit command plus to zoom in, hold down the space bar to go over, and then, oops, wrong thing. Hit X to paint back in, and then we'll just clean this up a little bit. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. It doesn't have to be totally perfect here. You'll see why here in a little bit. Something like that's gonna look pretty good, I think. Okay, Command Zero, just like in Photoshop, will take us back to a zoomed out, um, fit to the screen version of the photo. And okay, from here, we want to isolate the sky, which is sort of the opposite of what we did before. So what I'll actually do now is invert this mask. So just like in Photoshop, we'll hit Command I, and now we're gonna have a version of the sky to work with. And if you're on a PC, that would be control I instead of command I. Okay, so we have the sky to work with and this is gonna get a little bit confusing. So just stick with me here. Um, it, it's, it's easy once you do it a few times, but the first time it might be a little bit unintuitive. So just, just bear with me here. What I wanna do is I wanna get rid of all of these blank pixels. And the reason for that is that when I take it into effects, what, which is what I'm gonna do here in a minute, and I apply a blur to it to, to create movement and add movement to the clouds, if I have these blank pixels, it's gonna look weird because it's gonna be pulling from pixels underneath or from the blank pixels underneath and it's gonna streak that across the image and we don't want that. So what I wanna do is hit Shift Command J and that's gonna create a new layer from what we have selected. And if I turn that off, okay, now we just have this blank layer that doesn't have any, any other information on it. So I'm gonna grab my clone stamp 
right here. All right, we have the feather up to 100%. The size is pretty big, opacity. We'll take that all the way up to 100%. And then I'm gonna sample from right here and just start drawing over this, like so. And again, this doesn't have to be super nice. It's not gonna look perfect, but that's okay. I really just wanna get some of the sky and bleed it over the edges here to make sure that when we do that radial blur and um, in effects that it will look good. So just trust me here. Okay, messed up a little bit there. Got some of the edge of the screen in there. I just wanna cover up this tree. And I know you super OCD people are probably cringing right now because this sky doesn't look perfect, but trust me, it doesn't need to. Right. There we go. All right, I think that should work. Okay, so now what we need to do is take it over into effects and apply the blur to it. Okay, so all I have to do is just click this layer, have it highlighted, and then hit effects. So here we are in effects, and effects allows you to add a bunch of filters to your images like you would, similar to like you would in like Instagram, for example, where you just add a filter and it creates a different look for the image. But this is a lot more professional than Instagram, where Instagram is kind of like hip, trendy looks. This will let you do anything from like sharpening to noise reduction to um, color casts in your image to um, to frames and, and whatever else you can think of. You can do anything with this program. So what we're going to do here is add what's called a radial blur. So I'll go over here to the overall settings and click add filter. And then we're going to go down to blur. And then you've got all these options. You can do normal, radial, motion, surface. You have more options than that, but we're gonna reach for radial. Okay, and then this little target down here, you can choose where you want the radial blur to come away from. So we can pick a point anywhere. And I'm gonna do like probably right down here. Okay, and that's gonna create it like make it streaking out from the center of the image or the hot spot of the image where the sun is coming from. And then we'll just take this amount and then just kind of move it around till we get something that we like. So this is zero. And then we can just slowly start stretching those clouds across the sky. And I think that looks pretty good right there. We still have some definition in the image or in the clouds. So it doesn't look like it's, we've just turned it into an overcast day or something like that. And, um, but that should work. That's all we really need to do. So we'll hit done and that will take us back into layers where we can start working on uh, finalizing the image. Okay, so here we are back inside of layers. So we've got the image that we took over into effects, which is just the sky and it kind of looks weird. It's got this weird gradient at the bottom, but all we need to do now is bring the bottom part of the image back in. So to do that, we'll turn on this layer right here and we can turn them both on really. That doesn't really matter. And then we just need to take this mask here. Okay, so we're gonna copy that mask. So we're gonna go up to mask, copy mask, and then go up to this one, and then mask, paste mask. Okay, and there we go. So now we have the sky replaced effectively inside of the image. And we can just toggle this on and off and you can see the difference here. All right, and that's it guys. So I hope you learned some stuff here. Uh, on One Photo Raw is an incredible program. And if you're not familiar with masking, it's gonna be a little bit hard for you to appreciate how amazing of a job On One just did. Because we had an image that had similar color tones all throughout it. The whole image was kind of this blue and pink and purplish kind of uh, feel. And with a lot of masking software, it's gonna fall short there because it doesn't have a huge level of contrast um, to see but we were able to go in and mask through trees and through branches and leaves 
and pull out the sky from underneath that. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. And of course, make sure that you subscribe and then hit that little bell icon after you subscribe to make sure that you get notified each time I come out with a new video. Thank you guys so much and I will see you next time.